Let's open up the Word of God in the book of Matthew, chapter 13. We're going to reread our Bible text for this morning. If you haven't, say amen. Matthew 13, verses 44 to 46. We want to welcome our extended church family that's watching us on social media. Welcome to our service this morning. We pray that you also have a blessed worship experience with us. Let's read the word of God. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. It's like what? The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. Where was the treasure? In a field. Was it visible? No. It was hidden. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement. Come on, church. He was what? He was excited. The Bible says in his excitement, he hid it again. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. He finds this treasure that is hidden. That means it's not easy to find. Come on, church. Y'all need to help me preach this morning. It's it's hidden. In his excitement, the Bible said he hits it again. And then he, he, he did the following. He sold everything. He sold what? Everything. Not just a few things. Everything. Not just some things. Everything. He sold everything. everything. I understand that this man got rid of everything that he had. Everything he owned, the Bible says. To get enough money to buy the field. Hmm. Verse 45. Again, this is another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant. What's a merchant? A merchant. What's a merchant? Come on, real quick. A businessman. Right? A merchant is a businessman. So so the kingdom of, of, of heaven is like this businessman who is on the lookout for choice pearls. The pearls are not hidden nowhere. He doesn't stumble into the pearls. The Bible says that he is on the what? On the lookout. He's looking for the pearls. Verse 46. When he discovered a pearl of great value. How many pearls did he discover? One One pearl. Come on. He didn't discover many pearls. Because the kingdom of God is not like many pearls. (laughs) The kingdom of God is like a pearl. The kingdom of God is not like many treasures. The kingdom of God is like a treasure. This man was on the lookout for something valuable. And the Bible says that when he discovered a great value, a pearl of great value, he did the same thing the other guy did. He sold what? Everything. He sold everything he owned and bought the pearl. Let's pray. Father God, anoint us with your spirit. Speak, Lord. Let it be your will. In the name of your son, Jesus, we ask. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. amen. George Knight is one of our SDA scholars um, 
He has many books. By the way, I'm going to give you a free announcement here. If you have Kindle, Amazon Kindle, you can get a lot of free books. Really good free books on Kindle. I have about four or five from Brother Knight, from Pastor Knight. Free. And the message that I'm going to share with you this morning, it's partially taken out of one of his books and the two Bible verses we just read. Amen? Amen. And, 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 and Pastor Knight, he uses a very peculiar analogy referring to the church of God in the last days. Amen. Referring to what? To the, who is the church of God in the last days? Who, who's we? Who, no, no, no. Who's we? Um, who, who's we? Me. Say me. Say I am the church. Hallelujah. So, so, so he uses a very peculiar analogy when he refers to we. <laughs> Follow me. If, if you blink, ooh, if you blink this morning, you're going to miss it. He says in his book, and I'll tell you the title, and you can get the book. It's an awesome book. I read half of it. It's called If I Was the Devil. The sermon today was going to be titled that, but I said, no, no, we're going to wait on that one. <laughs> Read the book. He says that the church is like unto a fat lady returning from a shopping spree. Mm. Mm. When I started reading that, it caught my attention. Have you ever started reading the Bible, y'all, and, and you, you run into a Bible scripture, Elder Sutton, and, 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 you, and you're reading, but then you stop. And you say, whoa, what, what is God trying to tell me here? Remember, it's all about what God is trying to tell us. Even in our trials and tribulations, y'all. Come on, church. It is all about what God is trying to relate to us. So, so this man compares the church to a fat lady returning from a shopping spree. In his illustration, he uses the door, a door, to represent the entry into God's kingdom. But not just into God's kingdom, but also for us as the children of God, as the church, who is the church? I am. When I ask, you say, I am. <laughs> For us to enter into God's kingdom, this door, to enter into God's kingdom and to learn, check this out, y'all, to learn how to live under the mercy and grace of God. You'd be surprised how many people call themselves Christians and yet don't know how to do that. You'd be surprised how many people are waiting for God to come in his second coming to say, hey, here comes the kingdom of God. I understand that Jesus says, I am the kingdom of God. Jesus says, the kingdom of God is here now. That's what I understand. So therefore, if you have given yourself to Christ, mm -mm. if you have given yourself to Christ, you are living in the kingdom of God here on earth. You understand what pastor is saying? We now don't belong to Satan. We belong to Jesus. Come on, church. We belong to Christ. And if we belong to Christ, we are inside God's kingdom. So, so El, uh, Elder Knight, y'all need to pray for me. I keep forgetting my handkerchiefs at home. Elder Knight, his, this is a very interesting individual. I, I love his books. And I believe God uses him powerfully. He uses this door. The analogy of this door. It's an entry point. Follow me. I, I may sound like I'm being redundant, but I, I want you to get it. If you leave this church this morning and you don't get it, I'm going to be disappointed. You need to get it. The door is it's a symbol of you entering God's kingdom, of you learning how to live under God's grace and mercy. 
Many people today live a miserable Christian life. Pastor, is there such a thing? Yes, there's such a thing. Because many people today are trying to please God. You don't have to please God. God loves you regardless. God loves you when you were his enemy. <laughs> How much you think more he's going to love you now that you are his child? Because you have been adopted by Jesus Christ. If you go through this door successfully, say successfully. <laughs> Because you got to go through the door, y'all. <laughs> we we got to go through the door. You will be able to live and enjoy salvation. You will be able to live and enjoy God's grace and mercy here on earth. Not when you are in heaven or in the new earth for eternity with the Lord. Here on earth. And we're not talking about, oh God, how do I say this? I'm going through so much stuff right now, y'all. Don't ask me because it's not in your business. <laughs> you can't trust your personal life to too many people. Y'all know this, right? But I live by faith in God. And I talk to my wife this all the time. I encourage her. She encourages me. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's, it's me making it to heaven. At the end of the day, it's for you and me to go through that door. Come on, church. When are we going to get it? When are we going to understand that nothing in this earth matters anymore? We're in the last days, y'all. And, and we've been saying this for a very long time. But read, read the prophecies. Read the Bible. And look at the signs of the times. I was, I was preaching to my wife this morning coming up here. <laughs> you know, God is holding the four, the four winds. Right? The revelation says. But God has given this, this country, United States of America, a special blessing that the other world doesn't have. But we know where this, this is going to in the prophecy. Huh? Huh? The beast that comes out of the water and the beast that comes out of earth. If it wasn't for God's grace, where would you and I be today? The Bible tells us that the kingdom of heaven is something of value. We just read that the Bible says that it is like a treasure. It also compares it to a pearl. A treasure is something valuable. A pearl is something valuable. Are you with me, church? Some people, and some people, not everyone, is, is on the lookout for this valuable treasure. The Bible says that some people... Not everyone will give up everything to own and acquire this treasure. Matthew twenty two fourteen says, who knows it by memory? For many are called, but few are chosen. The word of God. Many today are on the field. Many are going to run into this hidden field. Many are going to find this hidden treasure. But few, say few. Few will take notice of its value. It's right there in their faces. Hmm? Eternal life is right here in our faces. And yet we do not see the value. Many are called, but few are chosen. Few will make the choice to preserve the field to acquire this treasure. Is this being understood, church? Jesus is saying that many are invited to the kingdom. Many, pretty much everyone is invited. <laughs> you and I, we're both invited into the kingdom of God. Everyone within the sound of my voice, everyone who's watching us, we have four members on social media, on YouTube, I don't know how many on Facebook. Everyone is invited to enter into the kingdom of God. Everyone is invited to go through that door that Pastor Knight is describing as, as the entry point into God's kingdom. But only those who have been chosen and have received Christ will be able to come in. 
I know I've said this before, but for some of you who may be the first time to hear it, there are many people in the church that are not inside the kingdom. Can we get an amen to that church? <laughs> How many of us know that salvation is free? Some of you, some of where's, the, where's my church at? Where's my church at? <laughs> How many of you know that salvation is free? Yeah. Say amen. amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Praise and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because he gives it to us. Yeah. He paid the price with his own blood. Yeah. It is available to us right now at this very moment today. Yeah. Right now, salvation is available to us. Yeah. We are being invited and we are being called to repentance by the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is respond to God's calling. I know some people don't come to church because we keep the Sabbath. Put that problem in the hands of the Lord. Amen. He created everything you see and you can't see. Don't you think he's got the power to give you a job? I praise God that when I decided to be faithful to the Lord, I never had to worry about not having a job that would let me keep the Sabbath. And I've had a few that I had problems with. I've lost a few because of the Sabbath. But I say, Father, I have to be faithful to you because you are faithful to me. Hmm? The Spirit of God is calling us to repent. It's calling us to accept the gift of salvation. Hmm? Do I have a church here this morning? Hmm? So, so, so it's simple. Is it simple? It's very simple. Salvation is very costly. We don't have the ability to pay for it. But Jesus, the Son of God, He Himself was not forced he decided voluntarily to take our place hmm? he paid the wages of sin so we today can have an opportunity to enter through that door uh, you, you understand what i'm saying so it's simple if it's so simple why, for the longest as I can remember, and for the longest that I can go back and read and study, God has been inspiring his preachers, his, his, his messengers, to preach about repentance, to preach about you accepting his sacrifice on the cross. Because it seems to me, you, you want to know why? You want to know why we're still preaching about it? Huh? I, I'm glad you asked. You, you know why we're still preaching about it, Brother Greg? Can I tell you why? Because it seems that some people do not understand. Some people do not understand the process. So, I'm going to dare to say, I'm just a messenger, y'all. But I'm going to dare to say that the church in the last days is having the fat lady syndrome. I guess y'all need to know about the fat lady syndrome, right? Can I tell you about the fat lady syndrome? According to tonight, the fat lady represents the church in the last days. Who is the church? No, no. Who is the church? Some of y'all don't believe it. <laughs> so, 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 so this is interesting. When we ask for a vote, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is funny to me because it always happens. When we ask for a vote, <laughs> some people vote yes, <laughs> right? Some people vote no, <laughs> and some people don't vote. <laughs> But when it comes to you understanding where you fit in God's kingdom, you better know. Mm. Who is the church? 
So this fat lady represents you and me. We the fat lady. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, <laughs> we the fat lady. <laughs> mm. Y'all been saying all that. Y'all don't even know who the fat lady is and the details about this lady. <laughs> I don't know if y'all going to want to be the fat lady when I tell you about the fat lady. <laughs> mm. Y'all want to know about the fat lady? Elder Knight says that she, she, she came, she was shopping, and, and she returned from a shopping spree, and she was ready to make a decision for Christ. Y'all with me? The fat lady is us, is the church. Went shopping, came back with a bunch of packages, right, because she went shopping, right? And when she came back from shopping... She was ready to make a decision for Christ. She is ready to enter the door that represents, let me see if y'all remember, what the door represents? The kingdom, what else? Huh? All right, what else? Grace and? And mercy. Those three things. Entering that door, if you go through that door, it means that you are entering into God's kingdom and you are learning how to live under his grace and mercy here on earth. Because when you're in heaven, we don't need God's grace and mercy. Are you with me? We need it now because we're sinners. Do you understand? So, so this fat lady, she's ready to give herself to Christ. She's ready to make a decision. She's ready to go through the door. But as, as she approaches the door, she encounters a tremendous problem. Who is the fat lady? I am. Why fat? Why a fat lady? It could have been a slim, good-looking lady. Well, there's a reason for it. Y'all want to know why she was fat? It wasn't because she ate a lot. She was full of knowledge. She was full of Bible scripture. She was full of doctrine. Y'all with me? You still with me? Yes or no? She was full of rules and regulations. But the one thing she was needing, mm, 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 mm. the one thing she was needing, she didn't have. Y'all want to know what that is? His name is Jesus. <laughs> Say Jesus. <laughs> she was needing Jesus. <laughs> we are needing Jesus. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. The one thing that she needed to get through the door was missing in her life. Jesus, the Son of God, our Redeemer, our Savior, our Comforter. Mm, hallelujah. Come on, church. Huh? We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about our Savior. When we talk about Jesus in this church, you, you, your body should be shaking. You should be getting chills because we're talking about the one who took our place on the cross. This poor fat lady was bloated. Was what? Bloated. bloated with things that had nothing to do with her salvation. Nothing. Are you with me, church? All of this stuff is important, y'all. Don't misread the pastor. We need to follow rules and regulations. Right? We need to be organized. This is why our leaders are going to write a report for y'all. Right? About what has been going on in the last six months. Right? This is why we have board meetings. Are you with me, church? This is why we have a set of doctrines to share to the world what the Seventh-day Adventist believes. But none of it. Say none of it. None of it will get you and I into heaven. None of it. Before the Seventh-day Adventist church was born. Y'all know that Seventh-day Adventist is a prophetic church? Did y'all know that? 
We weren't born because a couple of brothers and sisters got pissed off with each other. And let's say, let's, let's, because they, they came out of the Method, Methodist church, y'all. Right? They, they didn't just get pissed off at the pastor and say, come on, y'all, let's, let's, let's make a church. Huh? We're a prophetic church with a special message to the world. You should be proud of that. Huh? If you're going to boast, boast on that. Come on, church. Huh? I boast on it. I'm proud to be a seven-day Adventist. But I know there's people out there who are not who will be saved. In fact, there's thousands and hundreds and millions of people who never kept the Sabbath we're going to see in heaven. There's hundreds and thousands of people who ate pork for breakfast, who ate pork for breakfast, who ate pork for dinner, and we're going to see them in heaven. Stop worrying about the things that don't lead you to heaven. Focus on Jesus, church. Huh? This is why we've been preaching this forever and ever and ever. And I think until Jesus comes, we're going to be preaching it. Because we don't seem to understand that it is only through Jesus. Now, whew, can I get some water, y'all? Now, now, because we made Jesus the number one in our lives, we're not going to eat pork. Because we made Jesus the number one in our life, we're going to keep the Sabbath. Because we made Jesus the number one in our life, we're going to stop gossiping. Do you, are you understand what the pastor is saying? The Bible says that all things, all things, all things, say all things. All things are what? Through whom? Jesus. Through Jesus that what? That strengthens me. Come on, stick to scripture. Y'all stick to scripture. If you can't memorize a bunch of scripture, memorize a few. That's what I do. My mind, my, my, I, I don't have that ability, y'all. I forget things. I forget what I had for breakfast yesterday. But I try to hang on to some of the scriptures that give me strength, that give me courage, that keep me moving. Because it was through the word of God that Jesus was able to overcome Satan in the temptations. It is written, it is written, it is written. Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? Scholars are full of knowledge. Well, some of them. But emptied of Jesus. The priests in the time of Jesus, y'all. The priests in the time of Jesus. They were people that had knowledge. You have to have knowledge. You have to go to, to uh, um, religion school. You have to, like, like Paul. They have knowledge. But they were empty of Jesus. So empty of Jesus that they crucified him. Yes. You still with me, church? Yes. So on top of all this stuff that the fat lady is full of, right? Stuff. Say stuff. Stuff. stuff that has nothing to do with our salvation. Don't try to please God. Don't. God loves you because he loves you. Right? And if you do, <laughs> if you want to please God, fall in love with his son. I, I, are you with me, church? If, if you are persistent in doing works. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's in the Seventh-day Adventist church today. Oh, oh, we got to dress like this. Oh, you can't wear jewelry. Oh, you can't put up makeup. Some women need to use makeup, y'all. <laughs> Some of the ladies didn't like that. <laughs> None of the women in my church, because y'all are beautiful. <laughs> I'm talking about women out there in the world, y'all. <laughs> I got to watch what I say. I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> Do you understand what the pastor is saying? These things are important, and the Spirit of God is going to guide you to them. So if you are persistent in doing works to please God, fall in love with his son Jesus. That's it. Fall in love with his son Jesus. So this lady had, had a big problem. She came back from what? Y'all remember what she was doing? Shopping. 
What she had in her hands? Packages. She, was, she had a bunch of packages. So, so here she is, ready to make a decision for Christ. She needs to go through the door because going through that door means that you are living under the grace and mercy of God and you are accepting God's kingdom. Meaning that the world is behind you. When you go through that door, it's here, y'all. I can't see it, but it's here. When you go through the door, you're in God's kingdom. You're still in the world, but you're not from the world. You understand what the preacher is saying? You see, now you are living on the protection of the almighty God. Uh, now you're trusting in the Lord. Now it doesn't matter if you have cancer. You're trusting in God. It don't matter what, what procedures you got to go through. You're trusting in the Lord. But when you're on this side, mm, mercy on us, Lord. So, so, so she had the problem because she was so fat of all these things she did not need. And on top of that, she's got a bunch of packages. So pick up packages, is, it means the packages represent was valuable to you and me okay because it could the, what is valuable for me may not be valuable for sister andrea right you understand what the pastor is saying so these packages represent what is valuable for, for, for the fat lady what is valuable for you because some of us want to accumulate treasures here on earth and it's okay because sister wife in one of her books she says that we must live our life like God is coming in a million years. But you must be prepared as he will come tonight. Do you, do you understand the difference? God is not saying for you to stop your life. I got my, my master's degree at the age of 56, y'all. Hallelujah. I didn't stop because of my age. Sister Barbara just graduated the other day. Do you understand what we're saying here? Live your life at the fullest Go to college, study, buy a house, buy a car. But these are packages that you have that you cannot put the value over salvation. Do you understand? This fat lady, she's got her packages. Here's the door, and, and, and you got to turn the knob, right? It's not one of those doors that you kick open. It's, no, no, it's, 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 shut, it's shut tight, right? So she got her package and she's really happy. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I'm in the Seventh-day Adventist shirt. I, I, I sing the hymns. I know a bunch of Bible scriptures. I, I know all the 28 fundamental beliefs. Yeah, I'm ready to go to heaven. Oops. I got to open the door. Mm. Y'all following me? She can't fit through the door as she is. Y'all got that last statement? As she is. So she has the choice to make. She's holding to too many valuable things. A house, a car, a career. A career. That's a tough one. Because they're asking me to work on the Sabbath. Oh Lord, I make a lot of money. How do I do this? Pray. You want to know how you do it? You pray. And you trust in the Lord. And the Lord will provide. But you have to act. You have to act. Did y'all know when the people of God were faced in, 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 in the Red Sea? When, when the Pharaoh was behind them coming to kill them? Did you know that, that most of, of the Israelites, well not most, some of them, were up to their neck in water? They didn't wait for the ocean to open, church. They trusted God. They trusted the messenger of God. And when Moses told them, march on, they look in front of us. And they got that big, fast ocean. And oh my God, I'm going to drown. <laughs> Why did God took us out of Egypt and brought us here? But some of them believe God. Come on, church. Huh? Some of them believe the messenger of God. And, and, and Ellen White says that they're just walking. And they're walking. And they're getting deeper. And the water's coming up. Huh? And then God did the miracle. You, you see the relation? You have a career that is, is, is keeping you from, from being faithful on the Sabbath. Start looking for another job. I know people, I know people 
that are working on the Sabbath, but they're not looking for another job. So she has to, she has to let go. She has to let go. She has to let go. The fat lady has to let go. If she doesn't let go, she's got eternal life in front of her. She has salvation. She has mercy and grace. But she has to open the door and get to the other side. So while she's in front of the door, she has to let go of something. Either she let go of eternal life and continue with her fat self and continue with her valuable packages or she drops the packages and she goes through the door. Now look at this, y'all. She's still going through the door with her Bible knowledge. She's still going through the door with her doctrine knowledge. Are you with me? She's still going through the door with this mentality of pleasing God. The difference is the choice that she made. Because if you expect to be perfect in the eyes of God, you will never open that door. Are you with me? You need to open the door while you're still using marijuana, y'all. You need to open the door while you're still sniffing cocaine. You need to open the door while you're still in prostitution. Do I have a church in the house this morning? Because God wants us the way we are. Once we go through the door, the Lord's going to start the process of sanctification. Are you with me? But you got to be inside the kingdom of God. You can't be out here on the side of what you want to do. You got to drop the packages, turn them off, open the door, say, God, here I am. Take me as you are, Father. Do you understand? The Bible says in Matthew 16, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal lay up for yourself treasures where in heaven where neither moth nor nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break nor steal for where your treasure is there will also be what you know how people do this when they say something how they call that when they drop the money I can't do that here. <laughs> but I was tempted to do that. <laughs> God is good, y'all. The door is right in front of us today. The door is right in front of you. In front of you, in front of you, in front of you, 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 everyone. But we have to make a decision for God. I've been here a year now. Y'all don't sound happy. <laughs> Elder Bradley, not one amen. Man, not one single amen. <laughs> one year, y'all. <laughs> How many times throughout the day do we stop to think about our salvation? Think about it. Don't answer me. Just, just think about that to yourself as you leave here this morning. How many times do we allow our baggages? Do we allow our baggages to interfere? They serve... As a, as, 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 a, as a block wall that stops us from seeing what God has already done for us. How many times? The work of the devil is to stop you and I from going through that door. And he will stop at nothing, y'all. You talk about being persistent. That individual is persistent. 
He will stop at nothing to stop you and I to go, to go through that door. Yeah. How many of y'all know we serve a mighty and powerful God? Yeah. Huh? How many of you know that our enemy has been defeated in the cross? Yeah. How many of you know that all we have to do is claim the promises of God? Uh, God said he will never forsake us. He will never uh, deceive us. See, the difference between God and Satan, like I said earlier, th the devil doesn't ask permission to intrude in your life. He's an intruder. He will come in and he will destroy you. That's the difference. That's why you have to knock on the door. You have to open the door yourself. It is available. That door is never locked. That door will always be available to every single human being on this planet. Do you understand what the preacher say? It's always available. But you have to make the choice. God doesn't force himself on us. Understand that. You know, and, and understand this, that I know you're going through a lot of stuff. I know it. I, I, we get the text. You know, and I'm always praying. Just because I don't call that doesn't mean I'm not praying, y'all. I pray for every single petition that is sent through the text. And I worry about the church. My wife says I worry too much. Y'all can believe me or not, but I do. Because I feel the burden of having the responsibility. God could have put another pastor here. True or false? Yeah, say it. True. It could have been somebody else, but it's not somebody else. It's this little old me. I don't want to fail God, and I don't want to fail you. This is the way I, I preach the way I preach. I don't want to come here and talk nonsense. I know we do talk about the law because it's important. But I want to talk to you about Jesus. Yeah. I want to talk to you about the one who saved my life. Yeah. Huh? I want you to understand that. That it's all about Jesus. When you connect with Jesus, nothing else matters. Yeah. Stop trying to obey the law. Stop trying to do things. Stop, stop trying to be nice. You can't be nice without Jesus. You can't. Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to what? To destruction. The fat lady would have went through that gate real easy with all her fatness and all her packages because it is easy to be lost. It is easy to enter into hell. And the Bible says that this way leads to destruction. And there are many who are going to go into it. Because narrow is the gate. And difficult is the way. Which leads to life. And there are few who will find it. Jesus never said in his Bible. Y'all you will not find it. When you find it you call me. I want to look at it and read it. He always said. That the path. Of eternal life is always open to everyone. To everyone but we have to make the choice we have to open the door God has been doing a lot of great things in our church I know because I'm seeing it and I can see the difference between what was that I was told because I wasn't here but I know that we, including myself, we have a lot of changes to do. Are you with me? And I, I don't want you to never think. And I'm going to say this because I received a text this past week. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to put it out there. I don't want you to think that I'm micromanaging the church. Don't ever think that of me. Please, because I'm not. I'm very organized. And I want to help the church to be organized. Are, are you with me? Because when we are organized, we know where we're going. <laughs> right? We know where we're going. It, it, it's, it's like this, this, this passenger in, in a subway in, in, in New York City. He, he, didn't, he didn't even know nothing about New York City. He's visiting. And he lost his ticket. And he's supposed to go somewhere to meet somebody, right? And, 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 and he didn't know where he was going. Why? Because he was so careless. Say careless. careless. He lost his ticket. 
He's looking for his ticket because his ticket had what? Had to stop. He had to get out of. You, you see what I'm saying? So, so, so I want you to please pray for your pastor and don't, don't ever think that of me. Because I want you to know that perhaps I don't show it the way I should, but I love you guys. And I'm happy for what God is doing with us. And I know that God is doing much, much more. Okay? I'll say this some other day. Because just recently, I chose to stay in this district. Just so y'all know, I'll leave it at that. You're a smart person. You should figure it out. Amen. Just recently, I chose to stay here. I just want you to know that when I leave, I don't want to be glorified. I want Amarillo to know that there is a God who's running this church. We have choices to make. This message to me is probably one of the most important messages I've preached here. Because you're holding, on, you're holding on to things in this life that is stopping you from growing through that door. And I am not talking, church, about God's second coming. I'm talking about you being in the church and not being in God's kingdom. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want you to be in the church anymore. I want you to be inside God's kingdom. Amen. And guess what? You won't even have to open your mouth to people to know that Jesus is in you. Right. Wherever you go, you're going to inspire Jesus. Amen. Wherever you go, the atmosphere is going to change because Jesus lives in you. So let's not do like this fat lady. Because the story that Elder Knight was saying, she didn't make it through. Symbolizing, obviously, not the entire church, because we know that. Well, many are called, but few will be chosen. There's going to be millions of people who will be saved. But it's going to be so sad. When you make it to heaven, and you expect people to be there, and you're not going to see them. Do, do, do I make myself clear? And that's going to be sad. Huh? When, when Elder, Elder Sutton is there. Huh? And, and, and everybody else is making, and then you're looking for so and so. Like, well, where, 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 where is so and so? As you leave this church this morning, think about all the decisions that you have to make for Jesus. Please, I beg you, don't let nothing in this world distract you. If you feel that you have certain weaknesses, put them in the hands of God. Put them in the hands of God. You need a new job to be faithful on the Sabbath, put them in the hands of God. You need to make decisions to be faithful to God in whatever it is, put them in the, in the hands of God. I shared with y'all one time when I was stealing from God, tithes and offerings. Did I share that with you guys? Because I, I just don't want to keep talking here. I, I want to go home. I'm tired. But I'm, I, I see that there were, there were some people that were not here. I, I used to steal from God. Because I wasn't, I wasn't connected to God the way I should have been. Right? So my mentality was, God, I will pay you. <laughs> and here, here's the thing, y'all. That's what I would say. I won't say I will return. You don't pay God nothing. That belongs to him, y'all. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But I would say, I would say, God, I will pay you next, next Friday when I get paid. Wow. And then next Friday, guess what? See, the devil knows your weaknesses, y'all. Yeah. He can't read your mind, but he can read your habits. Yeah. He can read your customs. He knows what you do. Yeah. Long story short, it went five, six, seven, eight weeks. I all got so much money, I didn't know what to do with myself. And one, 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 one Sabbath, I, I heard this message that the Lord touched my heart. And, and I'm talking to my wife. I said, you know what? And we had our five kids, y'all. They were all babies. You know, five kids, wife, myself, rent. I mean, it was, it was crazy. Learning to walk with the Lord. 
It's okay. Listen, y'all. It's okay if you fall and stumble. Just don't stay there. Okay? Don't stay there. Get back up in the name of Jesus. While the door of grace is still open, God will give you opportunity after. I mean, it just, it just keeps going. God's grace just keeps going and going. It never stops. So one day I decided to be faithful to God. I had like $87 in the bank. And I think after I returned his money for that week, y'all, I couldn't pay God what I owe him. It was too much. It was over $1,000. I said, Lord, I want to start clean. And I knew he forgave me because I know the God that I serve. So I, I gave my tithes. I had $7 in the bank. And I tell my wife, Honey, do not use the card. <laughs> if you use the card, we, we, we're going to default. And you know, they charge you like 45, 50 bucks, right? If you use the card, you have no funds. <laughs> that was Saturday. I had, how much I had in the bank? $7. We had barely had any food. And we would take, we were getting food stamps, y'all. Oh, yeah, with five kids, we're getting food stamps. My kids ate a lot. <laughs> I mean, woo. Y'all know when they're growing, they eat a lot. Yeah. Anyway, the, the, the fact was that I didn't have no money. I had barely any food. Half a gallon of milk on the refrigerator. And we went to church that Wednesday prayer meeting. My wife and I, we try to keep ourselves to ourselves. Right? So we went there. We, we worshiped. You know, there was a handful of people. And, and, and Brother Manny was there. Brother Manny Cabrera, a good friend of mine. He had money, y'all. <laughs> That's why we need people with money in the church. <laughs> people with money in the church, faithful to God, y'all. <laughs> so, so, so I get home, and about midnight, the door knocks. Y'all heard this, just be patient with me, because some, I'm on some of y'all didn't, didn't hear it. The door knocks. What do, you, what do you think happens when somebody knocks on your door at 12 o'clock midnight? You think the worst. <laughs> I said, Lord, have mercy. Who died now? <laughs> That's the first thing you think. Who died? <laughs> It was my brother Manny. I looked at the peak I said, Manny, what is Manny doing here at midnight? So I opened the door. He's got two bags of groceries in his hands. And I looked at him and I called my wife, honey, come here. Long story short, he came in, he put the bags. I went to close the door. He said, no, don't close the door. Get the kids up. I said, what do you mean get the kids? Get the kids up. I got more stuff in the van. And the kids got up, they put their clothes on, they put their sandals on, they're walking down the stairs, and they're, they're bringing bags and bags and bags of groceries. And as they're bringing the bags of groceries, I'm looking at my wife, I say, honey, did you say anything to the church? Said, no. And I just started crying. I couldn't do nothing else. I couldn't say anything. I had no words. And the first thing that came to my mind was thank you for being faithful. You know who put that in my mind? The Holy Spirit. We filled the cupboards. We filled the pantry. We filled the refrigerator. And we still have bags of groceries on top of the table. And it's like, it's like me and my wife had been shopping. This man purchased everything that we eat. I don't think I said this before, but my biggest joy was seeing my five kids. Four. I didn't have baby Abby yet. We have Abby? She's got a better memory than me. But I, because, you know, we're, we're trying to be prudent, right? We're, we're trying not to show too much excitement. But when Manny left, we started jumping up and down. And my biggest joy was seeing my kids, my babies, grab their famous cereal, open the cereal, put it in the bowl, and start eating some cereal at 1 o'clock in the morning. I got to finish. Ever since, mm -mm. what is mine is mine, what is God is God. I give my tithes and offerings to Lubbock because that's where I have my membership. I get my paycheck from the conference. First thing I do, open up my app. Do, 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 do. Yes, yes. Gone. Forget about it. It's not yours. Oh, but you may need it. I don't care. God has never failed me ever since. 
Never, y'all. Never. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the sacrifice on the cross. Lord, I know that these messages are given to me by you. I know, Father, that you are persistent. I know, Lord, Father, Almighty God, that you are persistent in us connecting with your Son. I know that that is your purpose, Lord. For every single human being on this planet to get to know your son, Jesus. And that's what we want to do, Father. We want to get to know your son, Jesus. We want to make Jesus first in our life. Lord, just as the analogy that we shared this morning, Father. Don't let us be like the fat lady. Because it is okay to obey the rules and regulations. It is okay to obey the law. It is okay uh, to, to obey the doctrines of the church, Father. But what is that without Jesus? It's nothing. Lord, I want your children to fall in love with Jesus. I want the bickering to stop. I want the gossip to stop. I want us... Even that we are different to love and respect each other. Yes. Lord, we can't do it without you because we are humans. Yes. And it is our tendency. It is our tendency to be evil. So Lord, please enter into our hearts. Yes. Rebuke the devil in the life of your children. Yes, and help us to live godly lives. And Lord, before we depart from this place, we pray for all the illness that is, oh, Father, that is so abundant in your church today. We pray, especially for those who are suffering cancer, not just here, but in Lubbock. We pray for any, any special need that any person, any church member may have this morning when it comes to healing them physically. We, we pray for a miracle. We pray, we pray for a miracle because we know you are willing and you are able. But we are also praying for you to allow us to understand and accept your will. Because your will is always best. And you have a purpose and a reason for everything. Teach us what is the lesson to be learned with everything that we're going in our lives. Father, as we depart this place, Never, never, Lord, depart us from your presence. Father, never take in consideration our sins and our mistakes. Look at your children through the eyes of your son, Jesus. Continue to extend us your mercy and grace. And give us the power to let go of the baggage. Yes. Yes. Let go of the things that are holding us back. Yes. So we can have the strength and the courage to open that door that leads into salvation. Yes. That leads into your kingdom. That leads into your mercy and grace. Yes. Thank you for the privilege that you have given me, Lord. Yes. To serve you. And to serve this church. And to serve this district. I know that if we come together, Lord. There is nothing. I mean nothing we cannot do. In the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, in his mighty name. And everyone can say with me, amen. amen. And amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus.